Dodgers. Five hits, no errors for the Dodgers. One run, five hits, no errors for the Yankees. Pinello waiting. John's pitch. Line drive to Russell. He bobbles it, picks it up. Steps on second, goes to first. Oh, goes ball away. Away. Here comes a run to the plate, Munson, and we've got confusion reigning here. A line drive to Russell. He looked like he was going to stab it. He dropped the ball. He then ran over, stepped on second. He then threw to first base, and he threw it past Garvey on a bounce. Now the American League umpire, Joe Brinkman, is working at second, conferring with the National League umpire, Frank Pulley, at first. Thurman Munson has scored on the overthrow at first base, and the Dodger infielders gathered around the umpires protesting. What are they protesting? I don't know, because there's certainly no infield fly rule on a line drive to Russell. Absolutely. Once he batted the ball down and went over and picked it up and stepped on second, that forced out Reggie Jackson, and he was throwing to first trying to get Pinello when he bounced it past Garvey. The Dodgers are going to lose the argument, I'm sure, and I think the Yankees have cut the lead to 3-2. to two. Munson just kept on running and scored. Heads up play by the Yankee catcher. I think the Dodgers might be arguing that there was some interference out there. I don't know whether they're going to argue that Russell was jostled by Munson or whether Reggie Jackson had something to do with interfering on the play. But the argument rages. And Lasorda directing his protest to first base umpire Frank Pulley. The throw may have hit Jackson. It did. It hit Reggie Jackson on the right leg. The New York Yankees, who came from 14 games behind during the regular season, have now made up a two-game deficit in the 1978 World Series. They won their second straight today. They beat the Dodgers 4-3, and they won with a comeback and with a controversy, two trademarks of their style. Neither team scored in the first four innings. Greg Nettles picked up defensively right here, just where he'd left off the night before. And both starting pitchers, Tommy John and Ed Figueroa, pitched well. But then Figueroa surrendered this three-run home run to Reggie Smith in the fifth inning. And not until the sixth inning, when Reggie Jackson singled to right, drove home Roy White, and sent Thurman Munson to second, did the Yankees start reducing the Dodgers' lead. Then came a critical play. Lou Pinella's line drive, dropped by Bill Russell, who stepped on second, forcing Jackson, then trying for a double play, hit Jackson with his throw. The ball bounced away, Munson scored, and the Dodgers' lead was down to 3-2. Tom Lasorda argued that Jackson deliberately interfered. He lost the argument, and then the Dodgers lost their lead on Munson's eighth-inning double. Only another strong relief job by rookie Bob Welsh enabled the Dodgers to take the Yankees into extra innings. Then, here in the 10th, facing Lou Pinella with two men on and two out, Welsh made a mistake. He threw a fastball up high, and Pinella drove the ball into center field, a single that sent Roy White sprinting home with a winning run. Rich Gossage was the winner in relief, and Lou Pinella, the club's most consistent hitter all season, reveled in his rare role as a hero. I wasn't going any particular way. I just go up there and swing, and uh, I swung in a lot of bad pitches uh, uh, off of Welsh today. And uh, uh, fortunately, the one I hit was a bad pitch, but I tomahawked it, got on top of it, and lined it. Well, we've had our share of what you would have to call interesting plays during this series, but what may be the topper of them all proved to be a key in today's Yankee win. Ron Sobota talked to the principals and a look at what turned out to be a very important play. I threw the ball, but I threw it away from Jackson. Uh, but he saw the ball come with us. You know, he's smart. You got to give him credit. He made a good play. He, he moved into the ball, but, you know, he moved into it where he didn't make it too obvious. Yeah. I mean, for the umpire standpoint, it wasn't really obvious. But uh, to everybody else that was playing out there, it was obvious that he stuck his leg out or his side out, made a motion where, a bending motion where the ball would hit him and ricochet off. You got to give him credit. He, was, he made a smart play, had the play, and got away with it. I just got hit with the ball, Ronnie. Uh, you know, I was in the baseline. I was not out of the baseline. I was right in the way. Yeah. And uh, you know, everything was happening real fast, and I'm a slow thinker. Now, that one's going to be debated for a long time. Of course, even if Reggie did it, I don't think he would have admitted the fact that he actually stepped in front of that ball. Either way, it was a very important play. That proved
proved to be one of the pivotal ones. The Yankees win it in 10 innings by a final of 4-3. to three. I'll have the full story of the Yankee win as well as all the other hockey, football, and racing news a little bit later on. It's 53 degrees here at Yankee Stadium, but a bright sun is shining. It's a crisp day, and ballplayers like to play on a day like today, guys. I, didn't, I think pitchers do, but hitters get a few bumblebees in their hands or they get the slider in the fist, although I don't think it's quite that cool, Tom. Pitcher ought to be able to get good and loose under these conditions. No, oh, it's a nice day, uh, Tony. As long as the wind doesn't blow, you know, it really doesn't make any difference how cold it is after you have some uh, some experience it doesn't make any difference what the temperature as long as it's not down in the 30s or something or low 40s but it's going to be very comfortable here today the two pitchers Jim Beatty six and nine for the Yankees three and all for Tacoma in 1978 it's a big guy six six two ten twenty four years old that go the Yankees listen to the crowd Line up to defensively. Jimmy Spencer will be playing first base. That's Munson behind the plate. Brian Doyle, he's the second baseman. Shortstop, Bucky Dent. He's been very steady throughout this series. Third baseman, Greg Nettles, steady. More than that, sensational. Out in left field, it's Roy White. A little bit of a sun problem very early in the ballgame, maybe the first inning. There's Mickey Rivers finally getting out to his position. His leg seems to be a little bit better. He didn't have to extend himself. The right fielder has not yet come out. That will be Pinella. Here comes Lou. He wears a glove under the glove for fielding. What a big hit he got. Thurman Munson, the catcher. Thurman might have his work cut out from today. If Beatty, who's a starting pitcher, walks a few of the fast men, there's Beatty. He is very slow and deliberate in his delivery to hold plate, but the Dodgers may run on him if they get out. Beatty attended Dartmouth, playing baseball and basketball. Last game, he has not pitched since Tuesday, October 3rd, when he started the first game of the championship series at Kansas City. He won that with 7 to 1, pitched five and two thirds innings, allowed one run, two hits, five walks, struck out three. We're all tied up, two games apiece, and this Yankee story is an amazing one, beginning with being 14 and a half games back. They caught the Red Sox, they had a playoff, beat them, played Kansas City, beat them, lost the first two in this series, and here we are tied. I think somebody said it best, even when they're winning, they look like they're losing. They can't do anything easily this year. And now it's a two out of three series as we're tied at two games apiece. Beatty against Lopes. Oh, wow. I think what you see already here, Joe, in the first couple of pitches, the Dodgers must know that the problem for Beatty might be control, and they're going to take a couple of pitches, make sure that he gets the ball over the plate, and they want to hit strikes. Danny Lopes, a polite single, just drops on that grass. Didn't even dent it, but he's on, line driving the paper. I'm a firm believer there's no such thing as a cheap hit. And the test may come early for Thurman Munson's arm, and Beatty's move. Oddly enough, Lopes has not yet stolen a base in this World Series, the first four ball games. But you can bet he's going to challenge Beatty's move and the Munson arm. You can make a pool right now that he's gone. You can pick any pitch. I'll pick the second one. There's the ball. Now Lopes edging off. Beatty, big guy. There he goes. Hi, I win the pool. Why do runners like to go on a second pitch, Tony? Well, I think part of it is Davy Lopes had never seen Beatty before. He wanted to see a couple of moves as we watch it again. There is absolutely no chance. Lopes wanted to see a few moves the first base, see what Beatty would show him. He also wanted to see a, at least one pitch home, and he found out in a hurry. It's no contest. Russell tried to bunt the ball, foul tip. 
two balls, one strike. Lopes likes to run off second base, and many base runners really are more effective running off second. High fly ball, short left field, Roy White battling the sun. Makes the play. Rivers came all the way over from center field to help out in case the sun found Mickey really hustled. One thing here that the Dodgers now have failed to do twice in a row. Yesterday, Steve Garvey was on second base with nobody out. Ron Say had the job trying to hit the ball to the right side to get Garvey to third with one out so you could score him with a sacrifice fly. He failed to do it. Today, now, Lopes singles go to steal second. He's on second base with no outs. Russell's job is to hit the ball to the right side to get Lopes to third with, no, but with one out to score him. There's a base hit to right field. Lopes is going to try to score. We may have a play. So Lopes stole base, pays off. You can see not only does he run fast, but look how much he cuts that base. Gomez sends him in. Munson got caught on the outside part of the line. Had he been able to get on the inside, it might have been a closer play, Joe, where he could have blocked Lopes. I and backed off. You. He let the ball, he let the runner get between him and the ball, which right. is dangerous. It could have hit Lopes. I think Munson lost position. He didn't know exactly where he was. He doesn't usually do that. He usually puts that foot, the left foot, and plants it and blocks home plate. You know what might have happened, Tony, is that either he lost his position or he thought they would have no play whatsoever on Lopes coming in, but the play was a lot closer possibly than Thurman thought it was going to be. Anytime you let that runner get between you and the ball as a catcher, you're asking for it. Luckily, it didn't hit Lopes, and had he been in front, I, I think he could have might have made a little bit even uh, closer than that, Tone. Bucky Dent has it. Over to first. There's Davey, the play at home plate. Munson back. You can see the man, the next hitter, Garvey, saying, get on down, slide. There's Frank Pulley making the call. That might have been, it was a pretty good throw by Panella, and it was, was not an in-between hop, so it could not no. handcuff Thurman. No. He was, for some reason, in foul territory. It was behind that plate. Many times uh, you get trapped that way, but usually you like to be in, in fair territory and just turn around and make your tag. Try to keep that ball you, between you and the outfielder. Let that runner get between. There's Debbie Lopes. There's the strike. You just need left-handed hitting in this ballpark. It's built for left-handed hitters. The right-handers, they die out in the valley out there. Side corner for strike two. Ronnie doesn't believe it. Struck him out. Ron Say is that off strikes. That ends the first inning, but the Dodgers break the ice, score a run. It's Los Angeles one, and the Yankees coming to bat. Our handheld camera focusing in at the first baseman for the Dodgers. Here's the defense. Steve Garvey at first. Second base, Davey Lopes. He's taking a beating down there. The Yankees have been sliding awfully hard. Lopes with his first stolen base of the series. There's Bill Russell, a Dodgers shortstop. Dusty Baker. Well, that's Baker out in left field for the Dodgers. Rick Mundy in center today. Reggie Smith, whose bat seems to be in the groove after yesterday's three-run home run and RBI single today, he's in right field for the Dodgers. The catcher, Steve Yeager. Must be tough pitch to catch, that knuckle curve that Bert Hooten, the pitcher's going to throw him. Tom, the last time you talked about Bert Hooten, unless I got it wrong, you pretty much said he has trouble getting a knuckle curve over, but everybody's talking about it, and they keep looking for it, and he gets by with his fastball. Well, I think for him to be effective, Joe, he must get his knuckle curve ball over. He can throw it two different ways, and he, and he gave the, the Yankees a lot of trouble in game number two of this World Series out in Los Angeles. Was it because he was, they were looking for it and he wasn't throwing it? When he got behind, they hit his fastball. They got the base hit to right field, was on a fastball. Reggie Jackson drove in the three runs off of Hooten out there. 
Rivers, as always, it seems, the first pitch, and now he's going to loosen up and talk to himself and just kind of enjoy Mickey Rivers. One strike. There's a base hit. Mickey Rivers is on. Much like Davy Lopes, a very polite single. He didn't really drill it, but just stroked it all oh, so nicely. I asked him before the ball game about his leg. He said it's feeling pretty good, but he didn't run well on the first base at all. I tell you, though, Tony, but when a base hits in sight or he has to cover some ground, he really motors. If he bunts, yeah. So I, I uh, if I were Jaeger, of course, with his arm, as we look at Roy White, I wouldn't believe that Rivers' leg was hurting him as badly as it looked running down the first. Russell bottles it, everybody's safe. We talked about the Dodger defense, Tony. The Dodger infielders, and they're probably not as sure on this field as they are on their own. Obviously, that's the case. But they seem to back up on a lot of ball. This ball, Russell had to go four or five steps to his right. He got the little hop up off the heel of his glove. But it's caused quite a problem for Bert Houghton. You know, Tony, you're right. The Dodger defense has been the suspect part of their team. Russell made 31 errors during the regular season. And that air, he got handcuffed. You got a little, give a little bit of the credit to the man standing on second base there, Mickey Rivers. Russell might have tried to hurry. He knows Rivers is running well. Tried to hurry that throw to get it to second and took his eye off the ball. That's the fourth error for the Dodgers. Russell has three. Lopes has one. The Yankees have made two. Bucky Dent has both of them. Here is Munson. Munson four for 15 in this series. Tied at two games apiece. Game five. Ball one. Off day tomorrow. And then Tuesday night. Dodger Stadium. Quite an advantage to see the pitcher the second time around. There's Reggie Jackson on deck for the Yankees. But against Tommy John yesterday, they were making him throw strikes. They'd seen him the second time this year. Same thing against Hoot today. Making him get the ball up, get that knuckle ball, knuckle curve up in the strike zone. Center field deep. Mundy's got a beat on it. Rivers is tagging up. They're both going to advance. Rivers to third and White to second. That's one of the hardest balls that Kerbin has hit in this series, Joe and Tom. Very good base running by both Rivers. It was easy for him, but especially by White. Monday, the ball just kept drifting back. He never really could get in position to have the momentum going towards second base. The wind might be carrying the ball. Watch, you'll be able to see it. He's drifting back. Bunts it. It's a long way, almost 385 feet away to the fence. But by backpedaling slowly, he didn't have a chance to get the good throw in, as you see. I don't think it would have helped him either. They're going to walk intentionally. Uh, walk Jackson intentionally. To load him up with Manella. And he'll get some reaction because he was the man of the hour. In that game yesterday, it was a high fastball off Wells. She hit it in the right field. White scored, and the Yankees tied up the series at two apiece to set up game five. Welcome back, ground ball. It's going to be close. Lopes goes to first. In time. I didn't think he'd get him, but the speed. Vanilla does not run well. A broken bat, ground ball, and the Dodger infield really turned it over. And so the double play, it works. And Tony, you got to admire this. It was not hit very hard. In fact, he shattered the bat right in the hands of Panella. But Russell gets rid of the ball very quickly on a tough play, one of the toughest for a shot. Watch Reggie Jackson. Lopes gets out of the way, and Jackson goes out to left field. Good pivot on the run by Lopes. Jackson didn't begin his slide until after he got past the bag. So it's one to nothing at the end of one, and we'll be right back. Pivot on that double play again. Russell to Lopes, and watch Reggie Jackson. Lopes knows he has to get out of the way with the bases loaded. Jackson with a great jump off first base. He slides after he gets over the bag. Lopes to start third base, but somehow he got the ball over in time. Pinella did not get a jump out of the box. There you see Davey Lopes next to Joe Ferguson. Tony, I just noticed something I hadn't noticed the other day. Jerry Walker is on a hotline with Bertie Tebbets and Harry Kraft. I wonder if they got that instant scout business going. Dusty Baker. Popped up. 
Spencer in foul territory makes the play. Baker is out. Fouls to Spencer. You know, Tony, George Steinbrenner, there's two, really two parts of this sto uh, story. George Steinbrenner sent Car Clyde King to Tacoma to work with, with Beatty. Beatty was throwing sometimes three quarters, sometimes almost sidearm. And he was all over the place, in the dirt, behind hitters. You know, he was just, his control was terrible. And then when he was recalled to the New York team back here, that's when Martin sent Clyde King down there, and, and they developed this no wind-up delivery, which has really helped him. They say the difference between him before being sent out and now with this no wind-up delivery is like night and day. Monday takes it inside. Two balls and no strikes. Hard to pick the ball up. Monday draws the base on balls. That's the first walk given up by Beatty. Beatty's control is usually, well, he's averaged 3.6 per nine innings for the Yankees in 78. One game high was six and seven innings against Baltimore. So that's, I'd say, average 3.6. Both Beatty and Munson took long pauses after that last ball was called. We've got a National League umpire behind the plate, Frank Pulley, a good umpire, all the pitchers tell me. But they were surprised that he called that high pitch a ball on Monday. So here is Lacey, the designated hitter. I mean, the swing, hit the bat, and it's strike one. Don't be surprised if Monday, who's not really a base dealer, doesn't try Beatty with a slow delivery and Thurman Munson with a sore arm. These Dodgers have got to start taking advantage of that. There goes Monday. Here's the throw. They're going to get him. Best throw Munson's made. Well, they were banking on Munson throwing the ball away because... Monday did not have a good lead, nor did he have a good break off first base. Thurman just gets rid of the ball. He didn't get a lot on the ball, as you can see, the loop in the ball. Guys like Jaeger will throw the ball at the belt buckle of the pitcher, and it will carry all the way to second base. Munson has to rely on getting rid of the ball, the tag by Doyle. I tell you, Munson's got his way of doing it. He gets the ball there in plenty of time, which is the only thing that counts. They don't pay you for looking pretty when you throw. They pay you for getting the runners, pay you for it, and that's what uh, Munson does. Because he caught the ball one-handed. Usually you catch two-handed. He caught one-handed, took the ball out, and then threw a, well, he threw a quail down there. Struck him out. Lacey, second strikeout for Petey. So it ends up a one, two, three inning. We go to the bottom half of the second inning. It is the Los Angeles Dodgers one, the Yankees nothing. Leaves are starting to turn. Central Park. What a shot that is, like a postcard. Low ball one to Greg Nettles. Nettles only two for 16. He's got about seven RBIs with that glove. Runs he is saved. He's going to be an easy out. Davy Lopes to Garvey. Brings up Jim Spencer. Jim Spencer. Reggie Smith, the beat on it, should have no problem. Two outs. The one that goes away from the left hander, he throws with one finger, the index finger of the right hand. The other one that goes straight down is the one I guess he's thrown from the start of his career. He throws with two fingers, digs his fingernails right into the ball, kind of explodes the ball out as he throws it. Bouncing ball to Russell, a big hop. Should get him easily. Hot Got him! That was exciting, a routine play. So it's three up and three down for the Yankees. We complete two innings of baseball here. Dodgers one, Yankees nothing. But you know, Tony, on a routine play, he's listed at 5'10". He says he stands in the middle of that bag so he can pick up the extra height of the bag on those high throws and really waits for the throw. Usually the first baseman keeps yeah, he's, his he's on, on the, the inside so he doesn't get spiked. But he, he likes to pick up that extra height, and the way they got him jumping around, he can use all he can get. Four gold gloves in a row for Garvey. He's doing a lot of things right. Jaeger, outside, ball one. I guess with talking about Garvey the way he plays first base and Munson's throwing, the main thing is get the job done. One ball, one strike on Jaeger. Beatty has that hard sinker. Gets you on the handle of the bat or even the good part of the bat and it goes thunk and it goes nowhere. 
Fly ball, right field. Pinella near the line. It's drifting. That ball. Got it. He got it. Look at that hat. He banged himself. That ball kept drifting, much like the ball on Monday. Right yard, Joe. Ball is really blurry. The wind doesn't appear to be blowing that way, but it's swirling into the back of home plate, and he really crashes the wall. He didn't get a chance. That's a pretty good play, because when that glove hit the fence, never got jarred loose. Excellent play, Tommy. You know, he made some great plays in last year's World Series in the outfield against the wall in left field here in Yankee Stadium. The wind definitely is a factor. The ball that Monday went back on, that Munson had hit, definitely a factor. And here again, the wind carries this ball, almost carries it out of the stadium. And the only way you can check the winner are the flags. And the flag, there's three flags in uh, right field that are just limp. I'll tell you, that right there, I'm not saying he didn't catch it completely, but you could have had an argument that he trapped it somewhat up against that fence. A lot of white was showing in that webbing where it hit, hit the fence. Ice cream cone. Demi Lopes, who singled, stole a base, and has scored the only run of the game so far. Two balls, no strikes. There are the flags. Now, those are, look like the ones in left field, but it doesn't look like the wind would be a factor looking at those flags. Bouncing ball up the middle. Davey Lopes has his second base hit. He may be off and running. And you know that Munson cataloged it on the second pitch he ran. Well, Davey has that in mind, and I wouldn't think he'd go on the second pitch this time. He'll go whenever he gets a chance. Lopes has the best all-time stealing percentage all time that's quite something 331 steals and 403 attempts the thing to watch on Beatty if he does go home whether he picks up that left leg and brings it all the way up in his chest or just fires it toward home plate the back two balls and no strikes you're exactly right Tony what's happening now is that his his mind has got his mind over here on first base with Davey Lopes Pitcher still, his primary objective has got to be the guy standing at home plate with a bat. You can't worry about him so much where you get behind the hitter. There's the strike. There it is, manager's delight. Two balls and one strike. They love the run on this pitch. I've got to believe, Joe, that Lopes could have stolen had he wanted to the first three pitches, but now he knows he's got Beatty right where he wants him. He's going. He, he's leaning. He uh, wants to go. You can see. He wants to go. This is a great part of baseball, a great base dealer like that out there. <laughs> Super. Not, you bet you don't like that. That's just my opinion. It's not so much fun when you're standing out there on that little piece of rubber and you got to worry about him. There's Tom Lasorda. Boy, he was still upset today. I can't say that I blame him. He was more than upset. He was really Oof. hot this morning. I saw that replay, and Jackson's right foot was turned over, and the momentum carried him like a dance step. Jackson pulled the play and got away with it. There goes Lopes. Base hit, left field. Kurt Gowdy's man comes through again. Russell Lopes digging hard. He's going to try to score. We may have a play. Oh, oh. How did Munson catch that ball? I don't know, and he may be hurt. Right. He stayed there. He may be hurt. He really got, he stayed there. He's hurt. He really got racked. I'm telling you, he he's tough, but he stayed right there. And Davy Lopes, a good, clean heart slide. Watch this. Lopes is out stealing. Now he picks up the ball. White gets the ball. Now with a good throw. And Bucky Dent is the relay man. He threw a good throw to home plate. I don't know how Munson held on to this ball. We'll see it again. Ball and Lopes arrive about the same time. An awfully close call. That was a good Another call. Angle. Pony made a very good call. Lopes, of course, very good speed. And it looks like the tag went right down behind him. Doesn't look like he tagged him. Davy Lopes, watch this throw by White. Davy Lopes, like Enos Slaughter in 1946, didn't wait for any sign. He just kept coming. Munson puts his left leg out there, and now it's uh, open season on left legs. With the series tied, game five had to be the biggest challenge of young Jim Beatty's life. With eight series hits already, shortstop Bill Russell put Beatty to a third inning test. One nothing Dodgers in the third inning. Jim Beatty ready again. Two and one the count to Russell. Lopes goes. The pitch. Line drive. Base hit over Nettles' head into the left field corner. Wide over to get it. Lopes coming to third. They're waving him home. The throw to Dents. Dents relay to Munson. Lopes slides. He's safe. Munson struggles to get his aching legs upright. Nothing new here. The man's played hurt all year. This grit symbolized the spirit of the incredible Yankee team comeback in 1978. The 
most important thing as we look at the play again, look at Munson blocking the play with that left foot. That's where he got spiked. You can see right near the Achilles tendon area on that left left heel. Tony, for the Super young base running. For the wow. young kids who are catching and want to be catchers, when you do that, you get exactly what you're asking for, and that's to get nailed. And he got nailed. You just cannot block that plate. Give him a piece of the plate and then make your tag. Well, there's Lopes. The rule says you can't block the plate without the ball, but that is so bang bang. Russell is at second base. He had that plate blocked waiting for the ball, and Davey could have bowled him over, decided to go in head first, and Munson's going to have himself a nice sore leg. Got to give some credit to, there's Russell at second, some credit to Preston Gomez, because the first thing he did was he wanted to know the throwing arms of the relay men. And Dent was the relay man on that play. I tell you, Preston was going like a windmill, no doubt in his mind, but Davey would have gone through if he'd had I his hands so. down. Look at that shot. That's something that nobody sees in this ballpark, but you fans do. You can read the 75th anniversary seal on that ball. You know who sees that? Wow. I saw the first base coach. Sees that pitcher with that ball behind him like that. But that's why he's twirling it, so he doesn't hold it just yeah. by one seam. If he'd hold it by one seam, that first base coach, Jim Lefevre, would take a good look at it, catalog it, and mark down the pitch and if he did it again he'd be calling it. Wes Westrom used to be great at that. First base coach when he was there with the Giants could call it pitches from the pitcher. Pull foul. Listen guys with all this is going on how about Mr. Gowdy telling us before the series that it was going to be Russell. Ken Clay warming up in the Yankee bullpen. Good fastball. And that's a third strikeout for Beattie. Got it up. Overpowering fastball. Yes, he did. He threw the ball by right, right by Reggie. He may have been looking for a breaking ball, but I tied it with two strikes. Reggie a bit disgusted. He had his cuts, just didn't get the ball. So here is Steve Garvey. Garvey, four for 16. He has not broken loose. No home runs, hasn't driven in a run. Regular season, he had 21 home runs and 113 RBIs. Look at that. Nettles knocks it down, saves the run. Garvey has a hit, but Nettles again, much like a hockey goalie, knocks it down, saves a run. Most third basemen would not have even reacted to that ball, would have been by him. Look at how many steps he takes. One, two, and it is an absolute bullet. He was playing Garvey way off the line, and yet as hard as it was hit, he still could take two steps and knock it down. That is an amazing play to save a run. You can say that about him all series, though. That adds up to about almost 10 runs oh, that he saved here no for the talent. Yankees in this series. He's got more saves than most relief pitchers. <laughs> here is Say. High chopper, Greg Nettles. In time, Say is out. That ends the third inning. Dodgers score a run. There's a great shot behind home plate. Yankee Stadium. Bottom of the third, game five, Bucky Dent. Makes it high and it's ball one. Dent, four for 16 so far in this World Series. Two balls and no strikes. intentional Reggie Jackson. Ball four. Four straight pitches and Bucky Dent is on. Joe, there's been quite a change in the atmosphere of this Yankee, or the attitude of this Yankee ball club since they came in front of their home fans. You can almost see it up with the bats. They're a little more aggressive. Defensively, they're much more aggressive than they were in Los Angeles. And I think on the other hand, it's turned around. The Dodgers have waited back defensively on some balls. I don't think they're swinging the bats quite as aggressively, partly because the left center field is taking some hits away from them. Right now, 2-0 Dodgers leading with Mickey Rivers up there, the tying run. Dent is at first base. Nobody out. High. Five straight bat ones. Now as a catcher, you don't know what to do except maybe just slow down the rhythm a bit. He likes to pitch fast, too. He likes to get the ball usually and go. right now. 
there's something to show up in scouting reports that Mickey Rivers has excellent power to left field. Carl Yastrzemski found that out late in the season. And Dusty Baker was playing him very deep in left field. And this little looper sneaks in front of him. What a piece of hitting. That was a good pitch to even get the bat out. Pretty good pitch, Tony. Oh. It looked like a knuckle curveball down and away. He just stuck his bat out and flipped it out to left field. Putin has dug himself a little bit of a hole right here. Ray White, ball one. He can handle a bat. Bucky Dent's at second. Rivers is at first. Say will have to charge in. So will Garvey. He might be swinging. No. Nope. One ball, one strike. You got to keep the little guys off the bases. Dan, that's a big mistake watching Dan on four pitches. The number nine man in the lineup. Walk him on four pitches. You got to make him hit his way on the base. Mickey Rivers hit a pretty good pitch. Well, you can't do anything about that. One ball, two strikes, Roy White. He doesn't take his eye off that pitcher. Right right, right field, base hit. Here comes Ben. Rivers stops at second, two to one. Dodgers. I'll tell you, that ball had double written all over it. I don't believe Rivers is on second base. I can't believe that. Can't He's got to be on third. That ball's all the way down the right field corner. I think the credit should go to the man out in right field, really. I thought Rivers was going to go. White was going to have a double. And Reggie Smith, there's Mickey down at second. Right at first, but Reggie Smith went into that corner and rifled the throw into second base. There go the runners. Look at that. That was not a steal situation. It was like a hit and run. Munson was just trying to hit the ball somewhere, stay out of a double play. Lemon started both runners. Watch the pitch, one that Jaeger can hardly hold on to. Way outside, Munson still goes after to give some protection. It was a knuckle curve. He protected those runners very well. Rivers came in standing up. He's dead if the pitch is anywhere near the strike zone. Jaeger did not do a good job of catching that ball. It caught him by surprise. Took the ball down into the dirt. Now it's two strikes, nobody out. There's a base hit, right center field. Rivers scores. Rounding third wide, here's the throw. They're not gonna get him. Bad throw, Munson goes to second. It's in the stands, Munson will go to third. Taking the lead. Munson hit the knuckle curve. It looked like it was up and in. Bert Hooten threw it off. Just stood out in the pitcher's mound. He never backed up home plate. And it might have cost him at least an extra base. Munson getting to third. And now there's nobody out. So the defense continues to hurt the Dodgers as Reggie Smith's ball, his throw gets away. And there's Lasorda. We've seen a good exhibition of bad baseball, Tony. There's no question about that. Here's Mickey Rivers. He's playing coach. He's motioning to the base runner, Roy White, to come on. Everybody go. I think Lasorda, more than anything, wants his players to regroup because uh, that's the kind of an inning you want to film and show it to the Little Leaguers and say, that's it. Don't do it that way. This is an exhibition of bad baseball, that's for sure. Mickey Rivers got a two-strike hit. Roy White a two-strike hit. 0-2 on Munson. He gets the base hit to, uh, to right field. And then the overthrow. Bert Hooten not doing his job backing up. He's got to back up either the third or home plate. Wherever the play's, play is going to be, there's Roy White on his way home. And you'll see the throw way over Jaeger's head. No, no contest. They were not going to get White. No way. And no it's way. a bad cut baseball. Off, cut off, man. If he had been there, they could have maybe gotten Munson at second. Here is Reggie Jackson. Infield is in. Ball one. Two balls and no strikes. Three balls, no strikes. And I'll tell you, if he gets his pitch, you're going to see a major league swing. He'll be looking for a particular pitch in a particular spot. Button 
his shirt and have a good one, Reggie. <laughs> Three balls and one strike, nobody out. Munson is a third. Three runs are in. Yankees lead three to two. It's a little chilly on that field, as you can see. Reggie puts his hand underneath his arm, trying to warm up the fingers. Got to be a little cool on the Dodger bench. Three balls and two strikes. Munson at third. Nobody out. Three runs in. Dodgers leading. The Yankees leading. Three to two. And there's that knuckle curve it looked like. Is that what that was? He turned it over or something, but he got him on two of them, didn't he? You can't really tell what the pitch is from up here. Either knuckle curve or the change up. Reggie was way out in front of it. He was fooled, obviously, as you can see. The ball going away from him at the last moment. Right there, he is still kind of baffled by it. Brings up Lou Pinella. Pinella into a double play his first time up. Yankees with three runs have taken the lead. That's it. Munson will score four to two. Lasorda going out to the mound. There's going to be a pitching change, and Bert Hooten's gone already. He doesn't even wait for Lasorda or Yeager to get there. The Yankees have a lot of experience in that lineup, and they're one of the most opportunistic teams that I have ever seen. One strike, one out, four runs in. Greg Nettles. Lopes could be two. There's one out over to first. Double play. Four, six, three. That ends the inning, but the Yankees have a good one as they score four and take the lead. So at the end of three innings, Yankees four, Dodgers two. And two up, it'll be Dusty Baker, Rick Monday, and Lee Lacey. Yankee Stadium, it's game five. And right now, four to two Yankees. Tommy John. I wonder if that's another NBC camera shooting his whole scouting reports. I didn't have home movies. Uh, he can, he and Sally can sit there all winter and look at him. There's a curveball strike. Dusty Baker. Baker fouled to the first base for his first time up. All the way back to the screen. I'm looking at that Munson. I know his leg is going to be sore. His shoulder is sore. He's going to get on that plane and think he's going to be filming him segment from mash for a while he thought this spring he was going to have to have surgery on his knee and might miss a good part of the season he somehow battled through it two balls two strikes popped up in the infield everybody hollering for nettles the vacuum cleaner <laughs> one out tony i wouldn't be surprised if uh, munson doesn't need surgery on his shoulder though you ever saw it with that lump on it? That's what I mean. You think so. Here's Rick Monday. Monday walked in the second inning and was out stealing. Hopped up. Doyle taking charge. Two outs for a guy with a sinker ball. They're popping him up. One strike on Lee Lacey. He's out on strikes. His first time up. Now he's up there with strike two. Two outs and nobody on. Yankees four. Dodgers two. We're in the top of the fourth. This is game five. As we look at Jaeger. Series tied at two apiece. Tuesday night, Los Angeles. Way outside. Lee Lacey. One ball, two strikes. Down he goes. Now, if you... If you're thrown in a bullpen, as we look at Reggie Jackson, there's Clyde King with the in the middle of the horn rim glasses. Dodger pitcher, former manager. You mean you have to have competition to develop that curveball? You can't keep that feel in the bullpen? There's a lot of difference between throwing the bullpen and throwing against a hitter, Joe. That's for sure. Struck him out. That's his second time. Lacey's gone out. It's a fourth strikeout for Beatty. He's got himself a one, two, three inning. So we go into the bottom half, the fourth inning, and it's the Yankees four, the Dodgers two. And it'll be 
Jim Spencer, Brian Doyle, and Bucky Dent for the Yankees. Well, Kurt Gowdy has an idea about these ball players. Kurt? Joe, what does a World Series player do on a Sunday morning? He goes to church. They had the baseball chapel incorporated here at Yankee Stadium. And uh, right alongside the locker rooms, they had special services. About 20 players from each team attended. Chambliss and Dent led the Yankees. I'll get it right out of this pitch here. And uh, Sutton and Dusty Baker led the Dodgers. Services about 25 minutes. They got away from winners and losers shares, millions of television viewers, and thought about religion. Back to the ball game. Okay, Kurt. Former writer from Detroit, Watson Spolstra, heads that program. Big Bill Glass, John Warhouse. It's really spread. Ballplayers do it all season long. Spencer, a bouncing ball to Garvey. In fact, uh, they presented Andre Thornton, Cleveland Club, with the Danny Thompson Award. So I'm not talking to him in Los Angeles. I think it's interesting the way the three ball games have been turned around. The momentum gone to the Yankees, and you would think it would be the Yankee bats, but it was the glove of Nettles that really provided the momentum for the Yankees with that sensational first game here in Yankee Stadium. I think that the guys all felt the way Gidry was pitching, they should have lost that game. They should have been beaten. Pass Garvey, base hit for Doyle. And for Doyle, that's his second hit in this series. Doyle has a twin brother, Blake. They are identical, except for one thing. Brian choose to back on the right side, Blake on the left. Ah, uh, you're putting no, me No, I'm not. I am not. You mean that's the way the teacher could tell them? They are school? identical. Well, if they went to college, you couldn't. Of course, <laughs> elementary school, they didn't do it. Here is Bucky Dent. Dent walked and scored. He got that third inning started when the Yankees scored four. Low. Ball one. One man out, one man on. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Yankees four, Dodgers two. Hunter or Gidry against Sutton. Game six in Los Angeles on Tuesday night. Pitch out. Oh, goof up and by the Ryan Doyle missed the sign and good Luckily. thing for him. Now he's going to check at first base with Michael. Oh. He blew the sign nine ways from the middle, and Brian Doyle is talking while Bucky Dunn is really upset. Uh, go ahead, Tony. There's one thing I'd think of very quickly if I were Bob Lemon, that the Dodgers might have my steal sign. Watch this. Pitch out. Dent goes after it. He's trying to protect the runner who's not going. That's Doyle. And look at Jaeger. He's wondering what happened. We had your sign. Now he uh -huh. pitches out again. Nothing happens this time. Brian Doyle. I'll tell you, that's how you can mess him up. At Pittsburgh, we used to do that. Campanella had our signs, but we wouldn't run, so he was never sure. the bag hard Joe coming in very aggressive base running by Doyle Yankee stars had to play with pain over a long season and talented reserves like Brian Doyle subbing for the injured Willie Randolph contributed to the Yankee team comeback with their aggressive play came in he was playing deeply again right there he jammed that bag may have jammed his shoulder I believe Gene Monahan is looking at the shoulder but that is a pretty good piece of base running by Brian Doyle taking advantage of the throwing arm of Baker Baker threw it underhand it's your sinker Baker was off balance in left field Tony I think it's also it's a continues an exhibition of bad baseball by the Dodger team it was a tough chance for Russell We've seen great plays made in this series, and then Baker comes in to get the ball, throws it off balance to third base, and while you look at this play right here, good aggressive base running, Bucky Dent in scoring position at second base. One out. The man 
two men in scoring position, and it's a bad play, I feel, by the left fielder, Dusty Baker. He was off balance. He should have kept the double play in order, gone to second base, to keep Den at first. That's the big thing. It's true he's in scoring position. As we look at Doyle, it's his shoulder. It looked like his left shoulder they were working on. But now the infield has to come in because they lost the chance for the double play with Mickey Rivers. Have the Yankees pressure this defense? That's what they've done. Strike one. Bronson's got to go for the strikeout. Rivers is two for two. He has scored a run. Two singles. The base runner who barreled a third. Dent only got as far as third because he had to wait to see what Doyle's going to do off third base. He held second base spot to make sure that Doyle was going. And because he did that, he did not score. It's a further extension of the bad baseball. The play in left field off Dusty Baker. The infield's got to come way in, trying to get the runner at home. They don't have the range. They can't cut the ball off that's right in the hole, and it costs them. Costs them another run, and now you got men on the corners. And still just one man out. Roy White. Garvey. Bad throw. Got his man at first. Missed the guy at the plate. Rivers heads for third. And the Dodgers are falling apart. Well, they just can't do anything right. Garvey Final removes, thing. He removes the first right here. Then he decides he cannot get the runner at second base. Had he had gotten him into a rundown at second, this run would have scored. And he knew it, so he threw home through Wiley. He'll be charged with an error as Dent scores. Now goes back to retouch the home plate. Rivers goes all the way to third base. It's an intelligent play by Garvey. He can't get the man. He's got to try and get the man at home plate. He can't get the run down. He had trouble picking the ball up to begin with. And another wild throw by the Dodgers. Lasorda on his way to the mound. We got two guys working out in the Dodger bullpen. Charlie Huff is one of them. Looked like Rick Roden was the other one. So Charlie Huff, the knuckleballer, will be coming in. The Yankees are leading the Dodgers by the score of 6-2. to two. We'll be right back. Well, we announced about uh, Hunter or Guidry. They'll announce it after the game, the Yankees will, against Don Sutton for game six. If the Yankees win, I would imagine it would be Hunter. And if they lose, it would be Guidry. How do you feel? Joe, I doubt that Guidry can come back at all. And he's even questionable for game seven if it goes that far because he had a terribly sore shoulder. He was throwing sidearm the last four innings of that ball game. Couldn't even lift his arm. The question I've got in this ballpark, where's Doug Rao? He's a left-hander, ideal for this park. He won 15 games during the season. There's a base hit by Munson. Munson gets his second base hit. Drives in his third run. And the Yankees lead 7-2. A knuckleball by Charlie Huff. And Munson serves it to right field. Joe Garagiola here with Tony Kubek, Tom Seaver, and Kurt Gowdy. Game five, and the Yankees, seven runs, nine hits, no errors. Dodgers, two runs, five hits, and three errors. And we're in the fourth inning with two men out and a base runner. Munson with Jackson batting. Knuckleball outside. Dodgers jumped out to an early lead first inning one to nothing it was two to nothing in the third Yankees scored four in the bottom half of the third three here in the fourth still batting two balls no strikes you know Tony one thing I think that's important you look out at that scoreboard and it has the Los Angeles Dodgers airs three but there's a lot more airs if you can start considering the mental aspect of the game the way they played here today the overthrows, the base hits with two strikes, not all of the little up, things. Not backing up home plate by Hooten. Throwing to the wrong base, throwing to third base when you're off balance in left field. Just bad baseball. The point you made about momentum going from the Dodger dugout to the Yankee dugout, I think has certainly had its effect on the Dodger team. should have no 
no problem. He makes the catch that ends the inning, but it's a good one. Three runs for the Yankees. And as we complete four innings, the score Yankees seven, Dodgers two. And it'll be Steve Yeager, Davey Lopes, and Bill Russell for the Dodgers. It'll be Beatty with a five run lead as he pitches to Yeager leading off the fifth. Yankees with two big innings, four runs in the third, three in the fourth. The Dodgers scored one in the first, one in the third. One ball on Yeager. He fly to right field up against the fence. Pinella making a good catch back in the third. One ball, one strike. Now it'll be Thurman Munson's job to keep or try and keep Jim Beatty in the groove with that five-run lead. He'd like to get six strong innings from him. They can go to the bullpen then. One and one pitch. Hit the left field. White's going to have to hurry. It falls in front of him, so Yeager's on. Yeager leads off the fifth for the Dodgers. Now it's Davey Lopes. He's two for two in the ball game, two singles. He has stolen a base and he has scored two runs. Fly ball right field. Panella drifts back to the warning track again. He's got it for the first out. So Lopes is retired. Yeager returns to first base and bring up Russell. You know, Tony Benny's throwing awfully well on the pitches that the hitters are not swinging at. Thurman has to catch behind home plate. He's almost stabbing at the ball. The ball is really alive as it goes into the strike zone. And Davey Lopes, a real good fastball hitter, could not get around on Beatty's fastball there. He can be overpowering on certain days, Munson tells me. Beatty also throws what he calls a slider, but Munson says, no, it's just a hard curve. As a changeup, he uses a palm ball. One out. Yankees lead, seven to two. We're in the top of the fifth. It's Russell who has a double in this ball game. Green Bay, 45 to 28, and I tell you, it's surprising. Green Bay remains first place in the NFC Central. In that game, uh, Turnell Middleton scored four touchdowns. 45-28. The Packers, your team, Tony, over Seattle, 45-28. What is set to right field by Russell? Yeager will try for third. Here comes Pinellas through. It is not in time. The ball hits him. And we, Nettles hustle after the ball because Russell started to go to second base. We finally found Nettles' weakness. He can't catch the ball when it comes off the runner. <laughs> here you see Yeager going around second on his way to third. He's going to make it easily. One point here about the Dodgers base running. Bill Russell stayed on first base even though that was a high throw. It looked like he might have been able to go to second. It was over the cutoff man head and he should have been on second base. Russell having quite an offensive series. That's Yeager leading off third base for the Dodgers with one out. Reggie Smith, Russell now has 10 base hits. He leads the World Series of hits. Just got under it as he hits it high, but too short. Manello comes in, Yeager is going to try. He's tagging up, he'll bluff it. He's not going anywhere, two outs. Russell going to second to this extent when you're losing by that many runs can you assume that the throw is going to be over the cutoff man's head because if you get nailed you run yourself out of an inning you look like you're wrong if you do get nailed but it, if the throw is high enough for you in your judgment do you think it's going to go over the, sec the cutoff man head you've got to go to second base this is one of those situations where it doesn't look like much but it's it's, it's a tough situation for Beatty. Munson knows it. That's why he's holding Beatty back a little bit. He wants everything to be right because this is an important hitter. One and one. Yeager at third. Russell at first. Spencer playing behind him with a five-run lead. Everybody talks about his physical ability, but Garvey says his secret is his intensity, his ability to concentrate. Russell's going. Munson has no chance. And now the force out is removed at second base. With two outs, five runs down, they were giving him the stolen base, so he took it. Now it's Yeager at third, Russell at second. Removes the force, a tough play for an infielder. They want Beatty to concentrate so much on Garvey. They said, let him take off, and he did. Now two runners in scoring positions. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Yankees seven, the Dodgers two, are the top of the fifth. Good pitch. He got it. Garvey goes after a bad pitch, a big pitch by Beatty to a tough RBI man, Garvey. So 
he strands two. He'll go to the last of the fifth here in Yankee Stadium with a score. The Yankees seven, the Dodgers two. Right now, seven to two. Yankees are leading the Dodgers. It's Greg Nettles, Jim Spencer, Brian Dahl to face the third Dodger pitcher, Charlie Huff. For the Dodgers, two runs, seven hits, three errors. For the Yankees, seven runs, nine hits, and no errors. Nettles is grounded out, and he's also hit into a double play in the third. One strike going after the knuckleball. The oh, Jets. Two to Nettles. Excuse me, Joe. The Jets over Baltimore, Tony, 33 to 10, a big one. Knuckleball by Nettles, so he starts the last to the football for the Yankees. Knuckleball just hung up in his eyes. Jim Spencer now. The Yankees keep pounding away with four runs in the third, three runs in the fourth, and Nettles has started this inning off. That knuckleball is such a delicate pitch. The speed of the pitch is so important. Charlie throws it too slowly. He can't control it in the strike zone. Too fast, it has no break to it. it. Takes a while to get your feet on the ground. One ball. It's a tough ball to throw, a tough ball to catch, a tough ball to umpire. Almost impossible to hit, I think. But you gotta believe when this series goes back to Los Angeles, the Dodger fans in that ballpark is going to be a big lift to this Dodger ball club. Well, they're certainly not playing well, Tony. No. And their defensive play, their decisions on the field are not the way you would normally see the Dodgers play. You don't go ahead and win a National League pennant playing the way they have today, that's for sure. They're going to be very comfortable when they go back home. Looper in the infield. Lopes looks at Nettles. He's not going to trap it. He takes it. So Spencer's out. One down. This ballpark is not built for the right-handed power all the way out in left center, 430 feet. Several balls that they've hit in this ballpark, as you look at Bob Lemon, would have been home runs in Dodger Stadium. Tommy Lasorda obviously a little bit upset today. A little must be a lot upset the way his club has played. There's the score. Final overtime. Dallas 24, St. Louis 21. Kirk Gowdy would say, a sudden victory. A good term. Gets away the knuckleball from Jaeger, so Nettles will go to second. Scored a pass ball. Oh, a tough one for him to handle. Gave Jaeger a pass ball. Could be trouble now. Reggie Smith over. He was playing shallow for Doyle. He plays a good outfield. Not only is he throwing well, he saved a possible double earlier on Roy White. He made an excellent throw to get Blair in yesterday's ball game that, that helped the Dodgers stay in the ball game. Right now he makes an excellent play. Two outs. Bucky Dent. He has walked, scored, he has singled a short. A hard line drive that handcuffed Russell. He also scored in the fourth inning. Two outs. Dent hits it hard. Top play. Handcuffs Russell again as he knocks it down. I'll tell you, when you start backing up on balls, you're in trouble. They always talk about the old baseball cliche, letting the ball play you, and that's just what the Dodgers have done most of the time here in Yankee Stadium. Davey Lopes last night said that this is one of the fastest infields he's ever played on, Tony. That ball took off to Russell's right. It seemed to gain speed as it got, watch that hop, and it goes off the heat of his glove. He saved a run by getting over there, being able to knock, the, knock that ball down. He, now, I don't think he'd have gotten down to first base anyway, and it, for sure he saved a run. Nettles at third base. So, Dent's been on all three times he's been to the plate. Rivers way inside. I was surprised to hear Lopes say that also, because there are many national leaguers that I've heard say that Chavez Ravine in Dodger Stadium is faster than some of the artificial surfaces over there. So this infield's got to be very fast. It's also very bumpy in the infield. Had to be resodded after the championship series. It was torn up pretty badly. One ball, no strikes, two outs. Lopes, he backs up, but he gets a good hop. He retires Rivers, so the Yankees go down this inning without a run. Five are gone in Yankee Stadium. We'll go to the sixth with the Yankees leading seven to two over the Dodgers. Recap this one. <laughs> this is something, isn't it, huh? Right. You two think I'd come here and turn blue, though. Jeez, I thought the weather was better than this. 
You're the vice president of the Cleveland Indians. When are we going to see them in the World Series? Well, I hope so. Gabe Paul is back there, and, uh, you know, they, they, they've had a pretty good season. May they rest in peace. And, uh, <laughs> this, this is some game here, isn't it? It's a wild one. Uh, your special's on tonight, 8 o'clock on NBC. You have half the world on it. Oh, yeah, it's something else. We've got a wonderful cast. We just see Danny Kay as the manager and me as the pitcher and in all languages. It's really something. And, of course, Cheryl Teeds gets me on the couch. I'm playing an umpire. And oh, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good. We rehearsed for a long time on that. All right, thanks. Bob Hope was throughout the first pitch today. Watch your special tonight. And now let's go back upstairs. All right, thank you, Kurt. Bob, Ron Say, Dusty Baker, Rick Monday. One ball, one strike on Say. Three and two to say way inside, so Cezanne to lead off the six for the Dodgers. They've got to have base runners. They wanted, before this game started, a good strong five or six innings from Beatty. But he is not showing any signs of tiring. Hit the left field, a little bit off the end of the bat. Roy White to the warning track, he's got it for the first time. Another one of those balls in some ballparks, you might say. It's out or up against. But not here. And the Dodgers, when we told them how this park used to be, it's now 312 down the left field line, 387 you see. That used to be, well, just to the right of that, used to be 457 feet, right where that bullpen is. In center field, dead center field, it used to be 461. I've seen Mantle hit him out of there. And in right center, 447. So if it's a pitcher park now, it was an absolute canyon back then. Beatty seems to be taking a little bit more time this inning. Good play by Spencer. He has an excellent glove. He backhands the ball. Put him in, in the corner for a double. Say gets as far as second base. Nice play by Jimmy Spencer. Monday turn on the ball. Spencer did make a fine defensive play. Takes it easy out at first base. There's a guy that is probably a better defensive first baseman than Chris Chambliss. With Chambliss there, he's also very steady. Spencer spent most of this season as a designated hitter. Started just four games at first base during the regular season. Lee Lacey, the designated hitter. One ball. Lacey has struck out both times. Once called. Fly ball. He got it in his kitchen. An alley waves. Rivers off. Sixth here in Yankee Stadium. The Yankees lead 7 2 over the Dodgers. There's your line score. Do up, Roy White, Thurman Munson, and Reggie Jackson. You've been listening to Cosell, what you've been doing. Roy White, Thurman Munson, Reggie Jackson, the base huff, the third Dodger pitcher. 7 2, the Yankees lead over the Dodgers. The Yankees with 11 base hits, the Dodgers 7. Yankees have left seven men on base through five. One ball. Boy, Yeager is really, really battling that knuckleball. Steve Yeager, that protection hanging down, he and trainer Bill Bueller designed it to protect the throw. Look at that ball move. It is amazing what that thing does. Don't ask me to explain the aerodynamics of it. I've had letters from scientists why a knuckleball moves. There you see the protection again. Also the helmet that he wears in case the hitter swings with that backlash. And of course the number 19 as the Dodgers have dedicated this series to Jim Gilliam. Russell charges the ball over to Garvey. One out. Up comes Thurman Munson. And some of the people are standing. sophisticated fans here in Yankee Stadium some of the most sophisticated in the world they appreciate what Munson has gone through this year playing through the injuries he has said many times that he is embarrassing himself with the bat but Tom I think you said it best hit deep to left field by Munson a high knuckleball Baker in a death valley he makes a nice running catch for the second out that ball's got to travel what 400 feet it's got to be a home run in Dodger Stadium there's no question about that home run anywhere except here except Yankee Stadium I think the point you make, we made about Thurman, things that don't show up in the box score, and you don't see it where it says hits and RBIs and home runs and all that stuff, is his work 
and in his pitchers. He's just one of those invaluable assets that might be the most valuable player on this team. Munson because the team. of just the way he handles his pitching. Full foul by Reggie. Munson, the team captain, first since Lou Gehrig. Tom, I just want to add, I bet if he doesn't hit close to 300, though, he wouldn't be playing every day. Pardon? If he doesn't hit 300, he wouldn't be playing every day handling pitches. Managers, for some reason, look for that guy that can sock, and that's where that added thing comes in there. Jackson has been intentionally walked to load the bases in the first. He struck out in the third, and he walked in the fourth. One ball, one strike, two outs. The Yankees lead 7-2 to two, or in the last of the sixth. It was Huff, off whom Jackson hit that monstrous home run, as you mentioned in one of the early games. Tom? He pulled it. It could be in the stands, though. It's out of play. Hit a tremendous home run off Huff. Last think, game of the World Series last year. I think your pitcher and catcher working together is one of the real underrated, overlooked facets of baseball. There's no 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 question about that. That's a that's the, the primary aspect of the game. Those two guys right there, the guy on the mound, Charlie Huff, the pitcher, the catcher, they've got to communicate and understand each other. And that guy right there, the catcher, has to get into ten guys on the entire team. He's got to understand ten different personalities. One ball, two strikes. Jackson drills it through the overshift off the glove of Steve Garvey. He had the shift on to the right side, and he still got it through. You know, you can add a little bit to that. Here's Garvey as he'll go for the backhanded play. It's hit so hard, it just almost knocks the glove off Garvey. Watch that, right off the webbing. But I think you can add the middle infielders to that. The pitcher and catchers working together, but the middle infielders, because pitchers change their patterns. I wanted to get out of this somehow. Fellas. I bet if I go talk to Kiner next door, he says the outfielders are all wrong. The count. Wrong. <laughs> We're getting back to the basic strengths of a baseball team. That pitcher and that catcher, and then you go to the infielders, the second baseman, the shortstop, and the center fielder. A good baseball teams, almost all of them, have that strength right up the middle. And yet, surprisingly, the Dodgers are not known for strong defensive teams at second and short. Two outs. Jackson at first. Pinella hits one deep to left center field. A long run for Baker. Once again, deep, but not deep enough in this ballpark. So, six are gone here in Yankee Stadium. The score stays at Yankee 7, Dodgers 2. The Dodgers trying to scrap back. Do up Yeager, the scheduled hitter, maybe a pitch hitter. Davey Lopes. And Bill Russell. Yankee Stadium. Background of Manhattan. Lights blinking. The house that Ruth built. Game five. And it's the Yankees 7 2 over the Dodgers. Top of the seventh. Johnny Oates will be the pinch hitter. It's a travel day tomorrow, then game six, and it's Dodger Stadium. These clubs have been perfect if it ends like this in their home parks. Dodgers won two and Dodger Stadium and the Yankees have won two well on their way to winning the third one here but it's not over Johnny Oates it's his first appearance in the series against Jim Beatty it's a strike he's trying to get something started Oates was 0 for 1 in the 1977 series watching him blow that bubble gum he was a finalist in my bubble bubble gum blowing contest was Bavakwa the winner Bavakwa was the winner Little things you learn by listening. <laughs> one ball, one strike. 1978, Johnny Oates hit 307. He only went to bat. Debbie Lopes there with that resistor. Only batted 75 times. Almost got him, Johnny Oates. Oates draws the base on balls. And that is only the third walk given up by Beatty. He has struck out five. He's allowed to dodge seven hits. Here is Davey Lopes. Paul Corey walked him. And Beatty now is a bit upset. That is the Bob Lemon is coming out. Both walk given up. Those are those high strikes that some people say, and I think you do, Tom, that the National League does not give you. They give you the low pitch. And Beatty and Munson, Beatty especially glared in at Frank Pulley, the home plate umpire. Here's that last pitch, Tom. You see Beatty on the three and two pitch, the Lopes. There is some argument whether the strike zone is different between the National League and the American League. 
That fits there up around the letters. Definitely ball. a ball in my league. Ball's belt high. No, that's above Look the belt. That's way up here. Uh, way no. up here. Munson caught that ball below his mask. Tony, no. I disagree. That was a ball. That was. That was oh. way out of the strike zone. Okay. If we're going to umpire from a television screen. <laughs> I tell you, but Beatty worrying about Cole. He's from South Portland, Maine, and I think their summer season is a Tuesday up there. So he shouldn't be worried with the cold, but here he comes. There's another one. You made the point the other day, Tony, about umpires are different. Some umpires, yes, some are high, some are not high ball umpires. There's umpires in the National League won't give you a strike above the belt. That's the highest you get right there. That just at the bottom, just an inch above the belt will be the high part of the strike zone. I know. It'll vary from umpire to umpire. You're consistency right. Consistency is the important thing. And Pulley is very good and very consistent. That's out of play. Russell, he is two for three, is driven in a run. Went around. Went around to strike Pulley. And that's a sixth strikeout for Beatty. That was a big strikeout for him, too, Joe. First two men got on. Russell, a guy that does not strike out very much. And Beatty doesn't strike out that many. He averaged 4.6 per nine innings for the Yankees. But he did strike out eight and eight innings against Cleveland. And he got eight and eight and two thirds against the Red Sox. So he has had a high of eight. He's got six. He has walked five. He has allowed seven hits, but only two runs. And he leads seven to two. There you see the base runners. Oates at second. Lopes is at first. One man out. If the Dodgers are going to get back in this game now, they're going to have to do it with pop from their big man, Reggie Smith or Steve Garvey. One of their big guys is going to have to do something here. Garvey has been very silent during this World Series. If Smith can't do it. He's got to walk up there and try and pop one for him. They've got five runs to overcome here, and they just have eight outs left. Reggie, one for three today. Struck out in the third, fly to right in the fifth after that RBI single in the first. He gets under it, and Brian Doyle at second base calls for it, and they rule infield fly. Second base, Ned Vargo popped it up there in a hurry. He had that right hand straight in the air. So there are two away, and here is Steve Garvey. Garvey bounced out short to first in the first inning. He singled in the third off Greg Nettles' his glove and then struck out in the fifth. Tuesday night, game six from Dodger Stadium. It'll be Hunter Argidri for the Yankees and Don Sutton for the Dodgers. Yankee Stadium and it hasn't been a happy time for the Dodger president Peter O'Malley his clubs behind they've lost the first two his wife had her fur coat stolen in the hotel all his tickets for the World Series his money his ring and his wristwatch and uh, he doesn't look too happy there and no wonder he'll be glad to get back to Los Angeles incidentally lots of rumors about the Dodgers being for sale absolutely not true said President Peter O'Malley when I talked to him yesterday he said they're just rumors and there is no justification to that. All right, here we go. Last of the Yankee Seven. Okay, Kurt. Well, that's very unfortunate for losing all that. I was coming up to the booth before the game, and they had a handcuffed man that seven planes closed policemen, and they caught the guy coming into the seats. Don't know if it was the guy that stole everything, but he was going to get the seats. Davy Lopes. Made the catch, a line drive, and Nettles is out. Banners, fans, cheering, everything. We'll have the same thing, I'm sure, when we get back to Dodger Stadium. Tuesday, knuckleball, three and one's the count. If this game ends like this, here's a piece of, well, call it trivia, call it information. Never in a uh, World Series history has a team won four in a row after losing the first two. 
Three one pitch to Spencer. There is a base hit looping in the center field. Now teams have lost two in a row, and they've won the series when they played seven games. But never has a team lost two in a row and won the next four. Only five teams in baseball history lost the first two and came back and won the World Series. Last was Pittsburgh against Baltimore, 1971 El Rock. There you see him, Catfish Hunter, Fred Stanley, Gary Thomas, and Paul Blair. Stanley loves it. He says, boy, they're looking at me in Tempe, my hometown. Brian Doyle, base hit and scored in that fourth inning. Takes it high, ball one. Say has moved in close. We're in the bottom of the seventh, one man out. One man is on. Seven to two, the Yankees lead the Dodgers. Charlie Huff, a knuckleballer in relief. Good shot of the umpire's position. Base hit, Doyle hits another one. Spencer will stop at second. These Yankees, I'll tell you, they are really on the rampage. These little guys at the bottom of the lineup for the Yankees have really been hot. It's a second hit for Doyle. Dent's got two hits already. So Bucky Dent is a hitter and we'll pause briefly for our station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is WNBC TV, New York. Gets by Johnny Oates and the runners advance right through his legs. He knows knuckleball that just went straight down. He's, the bottom fell right out. I'd like to see that one again. Ooh, Here well. it is. Watch it now. He stays with it. Now he's got his, look at that. <laughs> it just, at the very last minute, it dropped, and he was in front of the ball. He did everything. I tell you, when they throw knuckleballs like that, you either better have good track shoes or hope that you would, well, maybe lit about three candles this morning. That's what it surprised me. It scored a wild pitch. Went through his legs. The other one, they scored a pass ball unless they changed it on Jaeger, and it was about four feet outside. Now the infield has to move in. Dent pulls it foul. That knuckleball really becomes a luxury with base runners at third. Dent had a good cut at it. I just wonder how many catches he sent home, though, talking to oh themselves. <laughs> Gus Triandos, for one, he's, he met more people back at the backstop than anybody else. All you can do is what Johnny Oates is doing. Pull the mask down, bite your lip, and go get it. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Struck him out. He held on to it. I tell you, this is about as much fun for a catcher as a root canal. So I always forget the names. It was Rick Fair, who's not executive for Detroit. He caught four knuckleball pitchers. Do you remember who they were? Yeah, Roger Wolf, Dutch Leonard, Mickey Hefner and Johnny Negley. Oh. Four easy names to remember, isn't it? Hey, if he's a knuckleball pitcher, I got him on my list. Here is Mickey Rivers. Seven to two, Yankees are leading two outs. Base runners in second and third. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Rivers has had a big day. He is three for four, driven in a run. He has scored two. Pulls it foul. can't find it and he boxed it up hit him in the chest watch Johnny Oates on this he's bearing down all the way staying with it and oh. all you can do is smother it I've had days like that when I wanted to get a hammer and just hit that ball and you know when you go back to the bench too everybody gives you all the static in the world about it uh, you having fun you enjoy that one box up another dozen one two pitch now. Missed it all the way back to the screen. Rivers will be safe. The run will score. And that is typical of what's happening to the Dodgers today. Even on a strikeout, the Yankees score a run. That ball goes while you watch it. Moves a foot or two outside. There it goes. Starts starting. Rivers misses it by about six inches. But a run scores. I believe there's going to be a pitch running. Changer. Here it is again, Tom. He goes out after what he tried to wow. get in front of. He just couldn't get there in time. Ball went all the way back to the screen and cost the Dodgers another run. Wicked. The pinch runner is Paul Blair. Blair has come in to run. 
Wild pitch and a run scores. So here is Roy White. White was safe on there, drove in a run and scored, base hit, and was out twice. Knuckleball. Strike one. Not many times you'll see a catcher catch a ball on his knees and it'll be called a strike. There's the base hit. Another run scores, nine to two. Blair stops. Roy White gets the hit. It's the 15th single of the ball game. And that ties the record. The Dodger dugout, the Yankee dugout. It's a tough day for Tom Lasorda and his charges as he's Yankees with 15 singles. Brian Doyle scores the run. They certainly haven't been the Bronx, Bronx Bombers today, 15 singles. But the little guys at the bottom of the lineup have done one heck of a job. Doyle and Dent, those are the guys you don't expect hits from, and any time they get them, it's almost like a luxury. They've been on base five times between them. Two runs in, Munson has a double. He's having quite a day, Joe. And they appreciate him here. Here's Dusty. He was playing deep, but he still had a long way to go. Look at him. Just out of his reach, about a foot. Two runs come home. Munson has his double. Thurman hit that ball right on the screws. That's a long way out there. Kind of coasted into second. Just as he got to second, he had thoughts about going to third. He said, no, nah, this is enough. Jackson, Lopes has it. And that'll end the inning. But the Yankees another big inning. Four runs here in the bottom of the seventh as we look at Dusty Baker running down the ball hit by Munson. He just cannot get it. And so as we complete seven innings of baseball here, Yankees 11, Dodgers 2. Some defensive changes. Paul Blair stays in the game. He'll be in center field. And Gary Thomason has replaced Roy White in left field. Yeah, 11 runs, 16 hits, and no errors for the Yankees. Two runs, seven hits, and three errors for the Dodgers. Munson, five RBIs, three hits. He has scored a run. Tom, if you were on a ball club that was on the short end of the score like the Yankees and the way the, Dodgers, uh, the Yankees have treated the Dodgers, what would it do to your ball club? Well, I think the whole story for the Dodgers was shown when Davey Lopes made that last out. He Picked up Jackson's ball, just kind of flipped it over to Steve Garvey and then waved his hand in disgust. I mean, obviously, they've got to be upset. They're depressed. There's Davey Lopes. You can see him. He doesn't look too very happy. He's cold. He's losing 11 to 2. He wants to get out of here. He wants to go to Dodger Stadium. I saw it happen one time. Club lost to game 16 to nothing, 12 to nothing in a World Series. And they beat us in 1960, the Pittsburgh Pirates. That's what could happen. Didn't phase him a bit. Well, man, Hit. Ron Say gets a bad hop single off the glove of Nettles. I think the amazing part about that right there was that it took such a wicked hop and somehow Nettles still got part of his glove on it. The ball hits that edge of the grass where you get the bell hops, bad hops because of the dirt buildup. And there it goes. He had to raise that glove very quickly. We'll see it from our left field camera, Tom. I think Watch it right on the edge of the grass. That's where the dirt builds up. He's trying to prove to us that he's a mere mortal on that well. Why does he pick to do that when the score is 11 to 2? I think he had that plan. <laughs> One strike to count on Dusty Baker, who is 0 for 3. Beatty. Misses. That's out of play. Tony made mention last inning about the umpire Frank Foley behind home plate. We get a good shot on the center field camera how he positions himself behind Thurman Munson on the inside here. He gets himself between Munson and the batter. Gets a good view of home plate. 
You're talking about high ball umpire, low ball umpire, but you said the one word that every pitcher wants most from any umpire. That word's consistency. He's not going to call the high pitch if he's not going to call the low pitch. Just do it all the time. Don't call it one time a strike and then the next time when you need a pitch, a three and two count, and call it a ball. That's the biggest thing that an umpire can give to a pitcher. It's fouled out of play. When you know a certain umpire is behind the plate, do you keep that in mind and kind of work a little bit towards him? You know what certain umpires call, Joe, if they call the high pitch or if they'll call the low pitch or if they have a wide strike zone or whatever. Every, every umpire is like every athlete. How about pulling? A little bit differently. How about pulling? It's a good basic umpire. Low ball umpire will not give you the high strike and very good on the corners. I like the throw. Eight strikeouts for Beatty. Baker out on strikes. He's one of the best umpires because he's consistent. And that's... That's the one thing that I want more from any umpire is consistency. As long as they're consistent behind that play, that's the same thing as a mark as a great ball player, is consistency. Rick Monday. Monday walked in the second, popped out and bounced out. Gets under one. Flips the bat because he knew he had a good pitch, but Pinella should make it. Jay Johnstone, he's the man new in right field. He snuck in on us. He sure did. They changed Thomason and left, but Blair in center. 1 0 pitch. Bouncing ball. Bucky Dan flips to Doyle. That ends the inning. So we go into the bottom of the eighth inning. Yankees 11, Dodgers 2. I'll tell you, the best way to sum up the feeling as Thomason comes up, you look at the Dodgers, is that the and you've heard the expression many times. The Yankees are laughing and telling jokes, and the Dodgers are saying, deal the cards. It's going to be a tough ride home for the Dodgers, and they're going to have to do something to pick themselves up. I don't know what. Tony or Tom, do you have a suggestion? I think all you got to do is look back just a few days to tell you what could happen. We're not saying it will. When the Dodgers came to Yankee Stadium, the Yankees were obviously in real big trouble, down two ball games. The Dodgers know this. The momentum is reversed, but that momentum can be overworked in any sport. It can shift in a hurry, and going home might be the thing for the Dodgers. That's biggest the thing they need. That's exactly right. Probably the biggest thing that they can do is go in there after the game, shower and shave, and get warm, go to the airport, and get on their airplane, and go to Los Angeles. Get out of here. This, get, this is bad memory spot for them, Yankee Stadium. They've got to get out of here. But how about the Yankees? They're about nine feet off the ground. They were two down coming in here, and they swept them, and uh, and they're putting a crusher to them. And they got an off day in between here too, and that's going to help the that's going to help the Dodgers. The off day between this game and the game out in Los Angeles on Tuesday is going to help the Dodgers. Thomason is out on strikes. He was batting in Pinellas' spot. I think the big thing is that both of these clubs played 162 games regular season. They know how good they are. The Yankees had to go to the playoff. Then they went to the championship series. Both clubs played four games. So one little short series of three games is not going to hurt either club. Three balls, one strike. One out, nobody on. Pull foul. Before the game, I went by George Steinbrenner's office, talked to him, chatted with him for a minute, and he's very proud, obviously, of his Yankees. The thing he talked about most is that how his club has come back all season long, and they've come back in this World Series. And he says, you know, I've done it without the, we've done it without the running game. We did it without Willie Randolph in this World Series and Mickey Rivers hurt. Greg Nettle strikes out on another knuckleball. Between them, Randolph and Rivers stole 61 bases during the regular season. And he's done it without two of the pitchers that he counted on. Don Gullett and Andy Messersmith. They're not here. They're on disabled list. Fan has a Greg Nettles glove, a model of Greg Nettles' glove down there. Look at the size of that thing. That's how it looks to Davy Lopes. He's been hitting some shots down there. Spencer takes it low, ball one. 11 runs, 16 hits, and no errors for the Yankees. Two runs, eight hits, and three errors for the Dodgers. Two outs and nobody on. Yankee fans are having a field day. But as Dick Mata said, it ain't over till the fat lady sings. Spencer draws the base on balls. There's my man. And for the first time this series, he's not on the phone. 
he had nettles in the players' room before the game, or not nettles, or Cliff Johnson had him pinned. They call him strong hands. Well, he does have oh. strong hands. That like bocce ball will do it for you. <laughs> right field, it is a base hit. Doyle has another one. He's three base hits this afternoon. Another single. Doyle, three for five. He said he's a contact hitter. He has been making contact. He keeps that up. They're going to make him the hitting instructor. His brother Blake and older brother Denny. Like that baseball school they got in Winter Haven. One ball, one strike. I tell you, some of the plays we've seen, it's almost like the wonderful world of Disney was on. Tom, I'm going to ask you something. I don't know what it is. Let's see this pitch. See if we have time for your answer. something I don't. Doug Rao, the left-hander, won 15 ball games for this ball club. Yankee Stadium with the Yankee hitters in the lineup, four left-handers. Well, why has he not pitched? At least seen some of these Yankee hitters. He could be very effective against them. It's a surprise to me. Out of play. There's there he Rao. is in the bullpen. Doug Rao loosening up. He's well, he had, you know, he, did, he had a good year. Sure, he was 15-9, and nine, as you said. A 3.2 ERA. Why we haven't seen him, I don't know. I really, it, it, there's nothing wrong with him. I checked with the trainer before the start of the World Series, and the Dodgers are all healthy. They really have no health problems, other than Reggie Smith slightly, maybe a little bit of bronchitis or whatever. 2-2 two -two pitch, foul back, count remains the same. But you would have thought, I think you're exactly right, that especially in this ballpark with the left field fence and the left field hitters, that you would have seen Doug Rao. I thought you would have seen him earlier today, and Bert Hooten left the game. Yeah, and of course, he pitched a game against the Philadelphia Phillies in the championship series. Did fairly well after he struggled right at the start. So he just just taken out of the rotation. I guess they wanted to... Well, they're going with what they got. Another base hit. One run is in. Spencer scores. Doyle heads for third. Then heads for second. He's safe. Double. between them. Now watch this, Tony. Watch this play at second and a tag by Davey Lopes. Now he just doesn't around, turn around patty cake him. He pops him pretty good. He's not very happy out there. If you can't beat him one way, I'll give him a good slap anyway. Paul oh, Blair, strike one. Seems like Lasorda has asked Charlie Huff to just stand out there, Charlie. Do the best you can. Save some pictures for me. Two strikes. We're in the bottom of the eighth. 12 runs, 18 hits, no errors for the Yankees. Two, eight, and three for the Dodgers. Blair is out on strikes. Oates will have to throw to Garvey. He does. And that ends the inning. Huff ended up, up striking out the side, but not before the Yankees scored another one. So at the end of eight, Yankees 12, Dodgers 2. 12-2, Yankees lead the Dodgers. We're in the ninth inning. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Don Olmeyer. And today's World Series telecast was produced by Michael Weissman, directed by Harry Coyle. The pregame show was produced by David Stern, directed by Ken Fouts. Technical director, Horace Ruiz. Associate producer, Kenneth Edmondson. And our associate directors, Richard Klein and Bob Levy. Beattie, who was asked to give him five or six strong innings, is going into the ninth. There's a strike. Johnny Oates. Beattie, who did not have a complete game in 1978, well on his way to having his first one here in game five of the World Series. Game six, Tuesday night. You'll see it here, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Johnny Oates sends one back up the middle. He's on with a single. would like to throw a little bitty scare as we watch this line drive almost takes the foot off of Beatty, but a little 
little rally right here might be a little more comfortable for them as they go home to Dodger Stadium for that plane ride. Shake the Yankees up just a little bit, showing that they haven't died, and got a good start at it with Oates on first. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. There's Catfish Hunter. As Thurman Munson proved, just when it looked like an injury might force him to the bench, the Yankee captain exploded with five RBIs in one game. But Munson had all kinds of pinstripe company as the Yankees bruised Dodger pitching unmercifully. It didn't matter who served them up. 18 hits, 16 of them singles, a World Series record. Batting ninth shortstop Bucky Dent slept three hits and continued in the World Series what he had begun in postseason play. Had a boy, that's the way to go. The right man in the right spot. Had a boy. And if Bucky Dent was pleased, then Jim Beatty had to be ecstatic. The former Dartmouth basketball star had come far since that tear-filled June day when he lost to the Red Sox and was shipped to the minors. When he grabbed Bill Russell's comebacker to end game five, he had pitched his first complete major league game ever and sent his team back to Dodger Stadium with a 3-2 to series lead. <laughs> 